Let's set up your display campaigns to drive more leads and sales, timestamps below, along with some other helpful links and resources, including a link to our Google Ads playbook to make setting up all of your Google Ads campaigns a complete breeze. Now let's quickly talk about the difference before we build out your campaign between display and this new thing called discovery, or relatively new compared to display. So as you can see here, they run in very similar places. The ads look quite similar as well. There's a little bit of nuance here. The main difference is people with a Android device, they have this thing called discovery feed and discovery ads can of course show up in this discovery feed. The other main difference is you don't want to run discovery ads until you have conversion tracking set up on your site because you're limited in terms of how you can actually bid. After that, we're pretty much looking at the same strategy and the same type of ad creative and targeting options. So with that, let's go ahead, jump into the Google Ads interface. Of course, I'm inside of my account here, so we'll go ahead and click on the blue plus button and click on new campaign. And to maximize our options for the first time, we'll go ahead and click on create campaign without goals or guidance. In the future, once you have some conversion data, it does make sense to try going for sales and leads because Google is starting to actually make significant differences in your setting options, which is super confusing and annoying. But for now, we'll go ahead and click on campaign without goals or guidance. And then we'll go ahead and click on not discovery, but we'll click on display. And then we have our conversion events set up. I'll go ahead and leave those alone for now. We'll go ahead and click on continue, give our campaign a name. And of course I'll click pause me in all caps because I keep forgetting to turn these off after making these videos. And we'll go ahead and click on start new here. That just popped up because I was preparing for this video earlier. So the first thing we need to do is of course, say where on earth we're going to send these ads. So if you're doing anything with hotels or real estate and you're getting people who are coming outside your location into your location, then you want presence or interest. For the rest of us, we want presence. We want someone who's physically in the location that we are targeting. And of course, we're going to enter another location and click on advanced search. So as a general rule of thumb, you want to segment your targeting one level deeper. So if you're targeting countries, you're going to, if you're targeting a country, then you're going to segment it by provinces, states, or territories, right? And then if you're targeting a province, state, or territory, you target it by cities, neighborhoods, counties, or maybe even zip codes, just depending upon how big the area is. So to save us some time, I'm going to click add locations in bulk. Please do not use radius and I'll jump over to our campaign builder. You don't have to use this tool, link in the description to learn more. It's just a simple tool we put together to help streamline the process of setting up search campaigns. So it'll save you a lot of time if you're doing anything with search, but we'll just go ahead and grab the 50 states, paste them in, click on search, and it should get all 50 for us. And I'll go ahead and click on target all, and you'll see that it missed Washington again. There we go, now I found the state, so we'll go ahead and target that. And if we zoom out here, you can see all that we are targeting each individual state. The reason we want to do this is in our locations report, Google will now break down all of our traffic by different by state so that we know which state is performing the best. Obviously, if we went and put all the zip codes for the entire United States in here, we'd have some really great granular data that wouldn't mean anything because then we'd have like one click from one zip code, right? So there is such thing as too much segmentation. So we'll go ahead and click on save there. Then for languages, I'll go ahead and leave it at English because that's what we're targeting. Now for ad rotation, this is gonna be up to you. So I personally don't trust Google to figure out which ad is performing the best. And I want to know for a fact which ad is performing the best. So I like to do wrote, do not optimize. So what this will do is if you have ad one and ad two, Google will bounce the traffic back and forth between them. And then you can make the decision which one is performing better. If you plan on just set it, forget it with your display campaigns, then go ahead and leave it at optimize. So we'll click more settings again. For ad schedule, we'd go ahead and leave that alone. Devices, not important. And URL options and dynamic ads we'll leave alone for now. Those are pretty cool once you uh, start getting a little more advanced. But we do want to set an end, start and end date. So I'm recording this a little early, so I'm gonna set this to start on a Monday. And then two weeks later, I want it to end. So I'll go ahead and say end on a Saturday. I like setting an end date, especially when I'm setting up a campaign for the first time, just in case I forget to turn it off, which I always do, right? So just go ahead and give yourself that little extra protection in case you forget or get sick or how life happens, right? So this way our ads don't keep running. We come back like three months later, go, oh my gosh, we spent how much? <laughs> so for that, we have gone through the basic campaign settings. 
So we'll go ahead and click on next to our bidding. So I'm gonna start at just $5 a day here. You can go all the way up to 10. And then of course your niche or industry will determine how much your clicks cost. But for the most part, you're gonna set up a couple of these campaigns. We'll go through the strategy in a moment. And five to 10 bucks a day is gonna be plenty when you're just starting. Now, what do you want to focus on? So if you've run search campaigns in the past or you run Facebook ads in the past and you already know your conversion numbers and you already have the Google Ads tag on your site, you've got all that tracking set up, then go ahead and leave it at conversions and then set a target cost per action. So if your CPA is, let's say your typical opt-in costs you five bucks or your new customer costs you 20 bucks, then go ahead and triple it here. So you wanna give Google a little bit of wiggle room. In this particular instance, this is gonna be a brand new offer. I don't know if it's gonna convert or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and or select a strategy manually. And then I can come down here and click on manual CPC, uncheck enhanced CPC, and I'm just gonna set it at a buck 50, which is probably high for what I'm about to do. And of course, it'll give you some estimated stats over here. After a couple of days, you're gonna get some real world data really, really fast. So we'll go ahead and leave this alone for now. Of course, it's gonna tell us that manually setting our bids is going to give us lower performance. But if we don't already have data letting us know what works and what doesn't, then we don't want to give Google the blank check to go ahead and try and find his conversions when we don't know if what we have actually converts, right? So we'll go ahead and click on next here. And then we get to go into ad targeting. So jumping over to our diagram, what we've just done is we've set up our campaign. So at this point, our campaign is the settings at the top, the locations, our bidding strategy, our budget, our start and end dates. We've set all of that up. So now what we're going to do is start telling Google who we want our ads to show to. And so this is going to be our targeting. Now, I like to have one targeting per ad group. And so what you'll do in this particular instance, we'll start with in market, right? But we can also do custom intent and some other types of audiences as well. And so what you'll do is you'll set up this campaign that we're working on right now. You'll choose a bunch of different in markets, and then you'll set up another campaign with other ad groups trying other targeting options. So we'll have our in-market campaign, then we'll have our custom intent campaign, and then we'll have you know our other campaign, maybe life events or something else that you wind up finding might be valuable. And so you really want to make sure that you are siloing off these different targeting options so that you don't have a jumbled mess and you control your budget. So let's jump back into the interface here and we'll go ahead and click on audience segments. And so here I'll click on browse. Of course, they have a lot of options. We'll click on in market, in market segments. And so what this is allowing us to do is Google's done their crazy tracking thing, right? They're looking at as much as they can of everything we do from our laptops to our freaking phones, right? So what we get to do is take that information and say, hey, we want people who are looking to buy backpacks, right? And so Google's done their thing and said, all right, this is a group of 10, million, 10 to 50 million people who are apparently interested in buying backpacks like right now. So that's why it's really cool to use these audiences. These aren't people who are just like, oh, I wonder what the latest backpack is. I don't know anyone who'd ever look that up, but these are people who are actively looking to purchase a backpack costumes or eyewear. So for me, I am a marketing agency. So I'm just going to scroll down and click on business services and then go to marketing and advertising. So of course, you're going to want to scroll down here and look for all the different options that might make sense. But here's the key. I'm gonna click advertising and marketing for now. You only want one option in this column. So if you find more than one in-market audience you think might represent your customer, which spoiler alert, you will, you're going to do this process for each one of your ad groups. So every ad group only has one targeting option. So we'll go ahead and leave it at advertising and marketing services and then optimize targeting. I'm going to turn this off. What Google's trying to do is say, well, you told us you wanted advertising and marketing, but what if this person way over there we think is gonna work? And so we're gonna say, no, please just show it to this audience and this audience only. And then once this audience works, then you can say, okay, sure, go try and find more people. But don't let Google go find random people when you don't know that what you're targeting in the first place is actually going to work. And of course, you can add more targeting options. I don't recommend doing that. So we'll go ahead and click on next here. And now we can set up our ad. So jumping back to our diagram, we just set up our very first 
ad group. We'll need to do that more than once. And now we're at the ad level where we actually start adding our creative. So when it comes to setting up your ad, of course, we'll drop in our landing page. Then we'll give our business a name. I'll just put my name in here for now because as we've found with our marketing, nobody knows the name of my agency. It's Act Marketing, but I never say it. So people just recognize Jason Whaling and not Act Marketing. So anyway, let's go ahead and add some images. So you can see that I already queued up some images. Now, here are the dimensions that you should be using. Now, the one that's X'd out, that's for discovery only. So the good news is there's a, quite a bit of overlap between the discovery and display dimensions. So you can just focus on the two that work for display and call it good. And that's what I've queued up in here. And skipping ahead, I've selected a couple of images. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And ideally you want to have at least 10 images in here. It's a good idea to give Google some wiggle room in terms of testing different creatives. And of course you can also add your logos. I just tend to add one logo to keep things consistent. And then of course you also have the video option. I haven't played with this yet. So we'll go ahead and jump down to our headlines. So to save us some time, I've gone ahead and written the headlines already. Now it's limited to 30 characters and I like to max out the headlines because I just wanna give Google as much creative as possible to play with so they can figure out the actual combination of headlines and ad creative that actually works. So we'll skip ahead to my copying and pasting. And just like that, we have all of our descriptions, our headlines. Oops, forgot to copy our long headline here. And now we can come up here and see a preview of what these ads might actually look like. So. If you're curious, you can see the preview for different placements across the Google Ads network. And then of course you can also click through manually to see what each ones are going to look like. And so just click through to make sure that your headlines and descriptions actually make sense as they're combined together and nothing looks funny in terms of if Google wound up cropping one of your images. And that's all there is to it to creating your ad. So we'll go ahead and scroll down. We'll click on create ad. Now, ideally you would create another one, but you've given Google so much to work with. I typically just have one or two ads here. So we'll go ahead and click on next and we'll get a quick final review. The good news is if something's really messed up, you can always change it later, but we'll go ahead and publish the campaign. So jumping back over to our diagram, we've created our campaign, we've created one ad group and we've created one ad. So what you want to do at this point is of course, go ahead and create another ad group and copy the ad from one from the ad group that we already made over to our new one. So that's what we'll do. And then you'll have everything you need to create as many ad groups as you need. And of course, create some other campaigns with other targeting types to test. So first thing I'm gonna do is rename this ad group. So I approximately know what it's targeting. And then I'll click the plus button here. And of course, we're going to set the same maximum cost per click. And it's going to ask us to create an ad. We're not going to do that again. We can just copy what we've already created, but we will select audience segments, browse. We'll go to in market here, and then we'll go back to in market segments and we'll look for another segment to target. So I'll come in here to business services. And this time I'm going to do SEO and SEM services. So we'll go ahead and come up here and change the name. So I know what the ad group is targeting. And then we have our one targeting option for the ad group. And then of course, optimize targeting, turn that off. We want just this audience. We want to know if this audience works and then we can come back and let Google have its fun doing optimize. And then here, instead of copying and pasting everything all over again, let's just go ahead and copy an existing one so we can upload. Uh, that's a whole nother process. So we'll go ahead and copy existing. You'll see that we have the ad group that we just set up. So I can go ahead and click on that. And it's pasted the ad that we just made into this new ad group. So we'll go ahead and click on create ad group here. And now we have our campaign. We have two ad groups and both ad groups have the same ad that we've copied from one to the other. And so that's all there is to it, to setting up your display campaigns. Of course, do make sure that you create at least one or two other campaigns, trying some other targeting options, so you can really start to figure out what type of targeting is getting me the best cost per lead or the most sales or whatever your key performance indicator is. So thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. You're good to go with your, your search, I almost said search, display ads. Comment below with your display ad questions. And as always, keep building the business you love.